Okay. Because you know in Christianity, in Christianity they say every child born anywhere in the world is a sinner. Okay. In Islam it says any child born anywhere in the world, North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Australasia, Europe, Asia, anywhere, any in Islam, any child, any baby born, whether it's a baby boy or a baby girl, whether it's white, black, brown, whoever, they are not born sinners. They are sinless. Why? Because children, when they are born, the babies, they can't even speak. When their parents, other relatives are around those children, they are speaking, try to play with them. Children can hear them. Babies can hear them. But they do not know what they are saying. So according to Christian preaching, every child born is a born sinner. According to Islamic teaching, every child born anywhere in the world, in a Muslim house, in a Christian house, in a Jewish house, in an atheist house, is born without sin. Is when, according to Islamic teachings, when a child, when a baby boy grows up and becomes a man, then he is responsible for his actions. And according to Islamic teachings, when a baby girl grows up, becomes a woman, then she is responsible. Okay? This is reality. How can babies be born sinners when they don't even know what is sin? When they can't even speak any language? When what they hear, they don't know what people are saying. You know? You know, some people say, oh, Muslims are killers. Muslims are terrorists. We can't be killers, we can't be terrorists, because Islam is growing everywhere. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an Arab. He was an Arab. The greatest human being was an Arab. The greatest prophet was an Arab. Muhammad, peace be upon him. And look who's Muslim now. Black people, African, Muslim, Asians, Muslim. Are you from Hong Kong? Ah, Singapore, anyway, beautiful Singapore, yeah, very well advanced. You got many Muslims in Singapore as well, yeah. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, so, I mean, look, Muslims are everywhere from all different backgrounds. Whites are Muslim, blacks are Muslim, brown people are Muslim. You know, people who speak so many different, uh, they are Muslim. Yet, who are they following? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name Allah is Arabic. Who are the Muslim following? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Peace be upon him. He was an Arab. What does Allah say? In Surah Al-Anfal, which is Surah chapter number 8, Ayah, verse number 1, towards the end of the Ayah, Allah says, Wa atiullaha wa rasulahu in kun tum mu'mineen. Yes, brother? Wa atiullaha wa rasulahu in kun tum mu'mineen. Obey Allah, obey the Prophet, if you are true mu'min, if you are true believers. So as Muslims, we have to obey Allah. We read the Holy Quran, we have to obey. We uh, believe in the Prophet Muhammad We have to believe what the Prophet said. Hadith, sayings of the Prophet. We have to believe. In Kuntum Mu'minin, if we are true believers. Okay. We have to believe. So when we read the Quran, Holy Quran, we have to believe. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in our Quran? In Surah Al-Baqarah, I'll give you an example. In Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, Surah chapter number 2, Ayah, uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah, verse number 195, towards the end of that ayah, Allah says, Inna Allah, Allah says, Wa ahsinu, wa ahsinu, and do good. And then Allah says, 
إن الله يحب المحسنين إن الله يحب المحسنين شرلي الله loves the doers of good شرلي الله loves those who do good so if somebody kills الله won't love them if somebody steal commits robbery الله won't love them if somebody hates women Allah won't love them. You understand? And then Allah says, for example, in Surah at tawbah the repentance, Surah chapter number 9, Ayah verse number 4, and Ayah verse number 7, towards the end of both Ayah verse number 4, and towards the end of Ayah number 7, Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Surely, Allah loves the righteous. Who are the righteous? The one who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who believe in God Almighty. The, you understand? Yes. But can I ask you something? Do. Thank you for, thank you for all that. You are thank welcome. You yeah, I see a lot of truth in the you, verses that you recited. Thank you very much. The whole Quran is the truth. There's a, there's I'm telling lot, you. Yeah, there's a lot of beauty and truth. But could I ask you? Go on. Yeah, and can Be I ask you, free. What is your idea of God? Okay, he is Almighty. Okay. We say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is all knowing, all hearing, all seeing. He doesn't have to be here. He can see us. He doesn't have to be here, but he can hear us. So what? you see him as an entity, or like a you, like a ubiquitous. He substance. cannot be a human being, like you know oh, Christians yeah, yeah. say. I, 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 you okay. know. He doesn't have to be. Yeah. Like yeah. So you see him as okay, not a human being, just as an entity. Yeah. He's an entity. Yeah. I see. Because we are human beings. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, God Almighty, He cannot be like us. We are human beings. Why? God can't be Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can't be like us. We are human beings. We are creation. You know, all human beings, animals. The plants, the planets, the galaxies, the stars, the moon, the sun, everything is creation. And he is the creator. Okay? The creator can never become creation. And creation can never become creator. Like, you know, in Christianity, they say Jesus was God. God became a man. Was Jesus always God? It couldn't have been when he became a man. I see where you're coming from. You understand? I see where so, you're coming from. So, you know, when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty has given us a brain. When we use it, when we are educated, we learn. You know about education? What our prophet, the very first word in our holy Quran, when it was revealed was, Ikra, read, recite. You know what happens when we read, we learn. We read our Holy Quran, we learn. I'm from Pakistan. Arabic, I cannot speak. So I learned how to read the Holy Quran in a masjid in this country. I grew up here, okay? I went to schools here, further education here, okay? But during six weeks school holidays from my secondary school, my father didn't let me work, so I stayed at home. What I did, I went to library, I got a copy of the English translation of the Holy Quran. And when I read, I learned what Islam is. You understand? I learned. So to me, it's very good. So the teachings of the Holy Quran, if you read it, I encourage you, read it. I think there should be a Muslim Dawa table over there. Even when you go outside the park, there will be Muslim over there with a table there. They can give you a free translation of the Holy Quran in English language. I think they have in some other languages. And it's good if you read it, because when you read it, you will learn. You will find out. Why did... Have you ever heard of Tony Blair? No, Tony Blair, no. He used to be the Prime Minister of this country. Okay. Years ago, okay? His sister-in-law, Lauren Booth, she became Muslim, educated. She became Muslim. Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, 
knocked out Sonny Liston in the boxing ring. And, and the referee was going to say the new heavyweight champion of the world, Cassius Clay. He said no. He said Muhammad Ali. So in the boxing ring, Muhammad Ali became, he said, I am Muhammad Ali, the new heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. And then there was, so Muhammad Ali is known to be the, one of the best heavyweight champions of the world ever. One of the greatest heavyweight champions of the ever, world ever. Jazakallah, brother. And Mike Tyson, as a young fighter, he used to knock out fellow boxers. And he became the world heavyweight champion at a very young age. He became Muslim as well. They were heavyweight champions, strong. Yet, they became Muslim. And you know, some people say, oh, Islam spread by the sword. Was there a Muslim soldier in the boxing ring who told Muhammad Ali, become a Muslim or you die? No. He became Muslim of his own free choice. The big, strong, young Mike Tyson, who became heavyweight champion, he became Muslim. Did a Muslim soldier tell him, oh, you become Muslim or I kill you? No. He became of his own free choice. Look, Muhammad Salwari was an Arab. Look, the vast majority, even in your beautiful Singapore, there are so many Muslims. In China, millions of Muslims. In Pakistan, where I come from, about 230 million population in Pakistan, vast majority, over 90% Muslim. You know, Indonesia, which is near your Singapore, Indonesia, a country of more than 18,000 islands, Sumatra, Java, Sulawesi, and so on, you know. Did a Muslim army went to those islands? No. It was the Arab traders who went there. They gave dawa. They invited people to Islam, spoke to the people. The people became Muslim. Indonesia, population of around 273 million. They are not Arabs, Muslims. Malaysia, your northern neighbor, you know. So many, there are 57 Muslim countries, majority Muslim countries, out of just over about 205 or 6 countries in the world, you know. And uh, when a person becomes a Muslim, all he needs to do is take shahada, okay? He needs to say something. And when a person becomes a Muslim, all his previous sins are forgiven, okay? I've had recently <coughs> two people, recently two people, one an African gentleman, 77 year old. He took shahada. He was speaking with me. And he said he want to become Muslim. So he took shahada. I said it in Arabic. He repeated after me. Then I translated in English. He repeated after me. Muslim. All previous sins for me. Then there was a young man. I didn't ask him whether he was from Singapore or Hong Kong where. Uh, he was looking Chinese. Young man. Okay. About 16 years old. And he was speaking with me. He became a Muslim. Took shahada. So if you want to, you can take Shahada, become a Muslim. Islam is the truth. I'm not, I'm not getting paid for making people Muslim. All I do is, I come here because I'm a Muslim. I've grown up in this country. From childhood, I had Christians trying to preach to me in my school. Even my teachers trying to tell me, Jesus is God. Oh, you know, you have to become a Christian. That's where I got interested. So I've been... Uh, speaking, you know, and, uh, and I came to Speaker's Corner. Why? Because in Speaker's Corner, back in the 1980s, I saw a Christian speaker, very famous, very well-known Christian speaker. Okay, he's standing on a big ladder, and next to him, he had a photo of a Muslim soldier on a horse with a sword in the hand, and it was written, Islam spread by the sword. When I saw that, I came for a demonstration. Okay. And we were going to gather in Hyde Park for that demonstration. But I came late. When I was late, they had already gone. So I ended up here, Speaker's Corner. 
Okay. And when I come here, I saw that. So next to that Christian speaker, he had a Muslim soldier on a horse, sitting on the horse with a sword in the hand and written down, Islam spread by the sword. When I saw that, I became very angry. I didn't say a word. I became angry. I was young, became angry. And underneath that, it was written. I was shocked. It was written, I challenge any Jew. That's what shocked me. The Christian is challenging a Jew. I challenge any Jew or a Muslim to a debate anywhere at any time. When I saw these two things, Islam spread by the sword, and then I challenge any Jew or a Muslim. I wasn't a Jew, I was a Muslim. To a debate anywhere at any time. That Sunday, I became very angry. But I didn't say a thing. But I decided from next Sunday, I'm going to come here. I'm going to start speaking. So from then on, I come here every time I can come. So next Sunday I came, I spoke to him. He was standing up. I asked him questions. He tried to answer me. Sunday after I came as well, I asked him. Third Sunday I came, he told me, can you please go somewhere else and speak? Why? Because he couldn't answer me. You understand? No matter how much educated a Christian is, he might be a PhD, he might be a barrister, he might be a solicitor, he might be a big officer. They cannot debate with us. Why? Because what is truth will prevail. You understand? It doesn't, they can't explain how can the son of a woman, blessed Maryam, honorable Maryam Mary, be, be God? How can God Almighty be born? So what do you think about Islam? You want to join us? I'll pick up the Quran, I'll check out the Quran. Right, good I'll for you. Thank you very much. Very Do nice. Much, You're a nice young man. You spoke very nicely. Thank you you so spoke much. very nicely. Okay. And when you go outside the gate, you can get a English language and Quran there free. Okay. Other literature as well free. And there might be some Muslims over there with the same thing. I'll go get one for you. If not go get one for you. there, yeah, one. then uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I Thank think there's a time. table there. Thank you for your time. Now you're welcome. You know, because you see. Uh, about knowledge, uh, Abu Prophet said, Hadith, saying of the Prophet, Abu Prophet said, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Okay. That's how important knowledge, studying, reading is. And then another Hadith, Abu Prophet said, you know, China is very important today. Why? It's one of the top military powers, one of the top economic powers in the world. Okay. Now, our Prophet said, seek another hadith saying of the Prophet. The Prophet said, seek knowledge, even if you have to go to China. That seeking knowledge is so important. Nowadays, China is very important. They have universities, so on. So many students, they go to China to study, become MBBS doctors. Oh, some other forms of studying. So, uh, you know, over 1400 years ago, our prophet said, seek knowledge even if you have to go to China. That's how education is in Islamic teachings. Because when we study, when we learn, we become educated. Then we can help humanity in general. Imagine when a, uh, someone studies, he becomes an MBBS doctor, yeah? He becomes a doctor, he treats patients, whether in wartime, whether in peacetime, you know? They are trying to save life. According to Islamic teachings, this is truth of Islam. In Surah Al-Maida, the table spread, Surah chapter number 5, Ayah verse number 32, Someone said he bring the Quran. I'll wait. Oh, you got it. Okay. 
I'll give this ayah, then you can take it and you can go. Okay. In our Holy Quran, in Surah Al Maida, the table spread. Surah chapter number 5, ayah verse number 32. Allah says in our Holy Quran If anyone kills a person, one person, unjustly, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. So in Islam, we can't take the law in our own hands. Allah says, if anyone kills just one person, and just, it's like he's killed the whole of humanity. In the second part of that ayah verse, Allah says, if anyone saves the life of a person, it is one person, it is as though he has saved the life of the whole of humanity. And here that one person, Allah doesn't say if anyone saves a Muslim or if anyone kills a Muslim. It's anybody. If any Muslim kills any person, whether a Muslim, non-Muslim, unjustly, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if any person saves the life of one person, whether he is saving the life of a Muslim, a Jew, or a Christian, an atheist, a white person, black person, it's like saving the whole of humanity. This is the beauty of Islam. This is why Islam is spreading. So I thank you very much for listening to me very nicely. And you can take the translation of the Holy Quran. And may Allah bless you. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. So hold on, hold on. So to my fellow, sorry about that, we were talking a long time. Okay, you, I was here this morning and I wait. Ah, come you come again after. So anyway, I know you come here sometimes, but sorry about that, you, you can just wait late, okay. I hope you are busy, you know, there are many people here. Okay, to my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You saw that, that was a Christian young person from Singapore in Asia and of course Singapore is to the south of the majority Muslim country Malaysia okay and uh, he was a Christian and he was speaking very nicely with me and he got interested in Islam and as you will hear through his own through the mouth of that Christian from Singapore he liked what I was telling him about Islam and he got interested in Islam and he thought the teachings of Islam are nice, are good. I can't remember at the moment the exact words he said, but when these videos are uploaded, you can hear for yourself. And then he himself, uh, you know, he wanted a English translation of our Holy Quran the book of us Muslims and he took a Muslim, brought him an English translation of the Holy Quran and he took it, he's going to read it and maybe he might become a Muslim. Of course that's up to him because in Islam there is no force. Okay? We cannot make people become Muslim at the point of the sword or the gun. Why? Because we are Muslim, we are not criminals. We are Muslims, we are not terrorists. We are Muslims, we are not racist. That's why, who is a Muslim? The Arabs are Muslim. The Turkish are Muslim. Pakistanis are Muslim. The whites are Muslim. The blacks are Muslim. In Islam, Arab lives matter. In Islam, white lives matter. In Islam, black lives matter. That's why people from different ethnic groups, they are Muslim. So there I will finish for the moment. Thank you very much to my fellow human beings. You might be Christian, uh, you might be Jewish, you might be atheist. Uh, you know, you are still human beings. Uh, you can hear uh, these videos when they are uploaded or you can hear what is coming to you live and you can decide for yourself. And of course, uh, there I will end. What's your question, madam? No, I don't have a question. Can we have a talk, Usman? Hold on. Uh, she wants me to speak to you, please. Hold on. The lady was speaking. Let her finish. Okay. okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, you're okay. Okay. okay no okay. problem. Okay. Can I, can I? Again, you start speaking. Can I have a chat with you? Again, you start speaking. Okay. I just want to hear what he wants to ask. You.
I didn't say I don't want to speak with him. The lady was speaking. You see, this young man, I've spoken to him many times before as well. Today, I was speaking with different Christians. And whenever I was speaking with different Christians, he come along and he started speaking at the same time. So I said to him, you wait your turn. All right. So that is it. But him I know. Other Christians send him to me because what they want, instead of me going to the elder Christians, to the real preacher Christians, they want me to tie, be tied up with this young Christian uh, who doesn't know much of his own Bible so that I don't go to them. All right? And it doesn't matter. Okay, you say, please. Okay, we'll talk about Jesus being God or not. Yes? So what I wanted to do is, yes. I will let you listen. Three questions. You yes. Me. No, hold on. No, 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 hold on. Hold on. No, 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 I'm finished. finished. No, 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 we are talking about Islam, about Christianity. Now, what the big difference is about Jesus? We say he was a prophet, you say he was God. We have our Holy Quran and you have your Bible. So about this we can talk about Jesus and about the Bible. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Okay, you agreed. Okay, okay. now. Okay. So, Let so me start. Three questions, then I get one. Deal? Let me start. Okay. What did I just say? Go, go for it, go for it. What did I say? We'll talk.